Let's now give um, an example what of uh, an inverse function of some f function. And that f uh, function is given as follows. It maps reals into reals, and every x in reals is mapped into f of x, and f of x is what? Well, explicitly is m x minus x0 plus y0. m x, x0 and y0 are parameters that you must specify. And while x is just the input, by the structure of this thing, you can immediately recognize that this is a line in two-dimensional space, as follows. It's a line that contains the point x0 and y0, and there's slope m. So this thing is m. This is important because by the form of this function, if you recognize that this thing is a line, you immediately know that this thing is bijective, and in turn, there exists one inverse for this thing. As a result, let me define it, f minus 1, we'll map r into r, and every y living in r is now mapped into f minus 1 of y, and this thing is, by the definition that we saw previously, the solution x of this thing here plus y0 is equal to y. Again, the unknown here is just x. m, x0, y0 are numbers that you already specified, so we, everything is fine. y is the input, so it's fixed, so you just have x. And now, what can you do with this? Well, we can simply guess the answer, you can guess uh, what x is. So following the three steps, we analyze, you guess, and then you verify. And if your, ver if your verification gives us a false result, well, you guess again. Analyze, guess, and keep on repeating those three steps until you find the solution. Okay? This time, what I'm going to do is to simply solve this equation for x. So I'm not going to guess anything, I'm going to just solve it. So let's solve it. So we have, let's solve it here. Let's solve this thing. So you have m x minus x0, x0 plus y0 is equal to y. So this thing. Now let's undo here what is do happening to x. So let's undo the first step. Well, it says it adds x0, let's subtract x minus x0 is equal to y minus y0. So then you divide by m on both sides. The m's here cancel, you get x min minus x0 is equal to y minus y0 divided by m. And finally, the last thing to undo is to the, s uh, the subtraction. So we add, we add x0 to both sides, and we finally have the x isolated on one side here. And now you can have an explicit solution. See, this thing here is a solution of this equation. What can we say now? Well, we now have the x explicit, explicit in terms of the y0 that you specified, and also in terms of the parameters that we started with. So this is a computable thing. So that means that we can now say that f minus 1 of y, this number here, must be that number there. It's y minus y0 divided by m plus x0. And now you have an explicit formula for this thing, just like we had for f of x here. And we can use it for every y that you choose. But before jumping into conclusions, because, because I might have made some mistake here, let's verify that indeed this is the case. Well, you do this by substituting this thing here. So let, let me just finish. Remember the definition. After you spec I specify this, what, I, what did I say? Well, there are two properties for this inverse. And those properties are useful because they allow us to verify whether what we just, the calculation that we just did, are indeed correct. So what was the property? Let's choose just one of them. It could be just f of f minus 1 of y is equal to y 
for all y. Okay? This must be true for all y. But is it true for this case? Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. So let me write this thing explicitly. So we have our f function. So f m, some blank space where f minus one of y is going to minus x zero plus y zero is equal to y. And this blank space now is filled with what? Is filled with this thing. Y minus y zero divided by m plus x zero. This thing is equivalent to this thing, but th is this thing true for every y? Let's see, let's simplify it. It's too complicated just as is. So let's simplify it. And you can immediately see some useful things. This is goes away because it gives, gives a zero. This m's cancel, so you get y minus y zero plus y zero is equal to y. Okay? Which in turn means y is equal to y. Is it true or is it false that this thing is true for every y? Well, it's true. And so indeed, we did not make any mistake here and well the s in solving that, that, uh, that equation here. And so our formula is indeed correct. Okay? Our inverse actually undoes what f does. Now, before I move on, what can we... There is still one thing that we can do before I move on, which is this. This thing here is a number. I, I, stress the, I cannot stress this enough. This is a number that leaves the form of the number that lives in the codomain of this function. That number is abbreviated by this thing here. Well, it was also abbreviated by thi this thing here, but this thing here uh, is implicit, so it's not, it does not tell you how to get that number. It tells you that that number is computable, but it does not tell you how. This thing tells you how. It's a symbol that contains the information that you need to and tells you uh, what you have to do to compute that number here, which is assigned to y. So, on the next video, we are going to analyze what are the, imp the, the procedure, what is the procedure that co is contained here. So, let's see.